continuing from lecture 8 in which we discussed two number systems uh, decimal and binary and there are two more number systems uh, you can make your own number system if you want to uh, the, these are just traditionally used number system uh, one is which is not that often used but due to uh, for completion uh, for completion sake uh, there's something known as octal number system octal means base 8 um, it's not that used often but if anybody wants to uh, here we have just uh, eight numbers from 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 the reason why we use a uh, base 8 octal system let's count it first and then we will understand why it was used uh, in early history but not anymore really <coughs> in um, octal number system you only have eight numbers started from zero so zero one two three four five six seven and then you have uh, you have exhausted all the possibilities in this position so you go back to zero and you increase the next number which is the next more significant number and here we had zero all along so that means that it will go from 1 0 to 11 or maybe 12 13 14 15 16 17 and after 17 it will go to sorry it will go to because we have exhausted all the numbers over here so it will go to 0 and then it will increase to 2 and it will go all the way to 27 and then it will go to 30 and then it will go to all the way to 77 because as we only have eight possible numbers and then it will go to one zero zero it will go to zero it will go to zero and the next more significant number will become uh, one and that's how it will go all the way to like 777 and then it will go to thousand and that's how we have a base eight uh, system uh, the reason why we use the base eight system if you remember from the binary numbers let's say we have a three bit uh, binary number and three bit binary number can have zero from eight possibilities zero triple zero two triple one so this triple zero means zero and this triple one is one two four all of the bits are on one two four all of the bits are on so four plus two plus one is seven so that means from zero to seven we have eight possibilities uh, from triple zero to triple one we have eight possibilities so that means an octal number let's say we have a number let's call this number i mean just pick any number like seven two three octal number let's say we have this octal number of base eight this octal number can be represented each of this number can be represented by just three bits so this seven in binary would be triple one because one two four is triple one two in binary would be zero one zero one two four so uh, and three would be zero one one let me do that again how i did that so let's say i have an octal number of uh, let's pick another number like uh, octal number eight ninety three it cannot be octal number because octal numbers can only have uh, each of this number or each of the digit can go all the way to seven so it's not possible let's pick another number let's say six fifty three i want to convert this octal number into the base eight number into something um, binary base or binary number so each of this number can be represented by just three bits and three bits so six is if we go from triple zero to zero zero one zero one zero zero one 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 zero zero one zero one 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 zero and one 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 so this is zero one two three four five six the so six is represented by one one zero let me write that in another um blue okay so this is zero and this is one this is two this is three this is four this is five and this is six and this is seven because like this is one two four four plus two is six one two four four plus one is five and that's how we did it so six is this five is one zero one from here and three is zero one one so if I want to convert 653 from octal to binary, I can write 110101 and 011. And that's how we convert that thing into binary. And once we have it in binary, we can convert it into decimal or anything. Or we can directly convert it into decimal as well. So if this thing is in octal number system, so octal number system, this thing 3, this, this position is 0. And since an octal the base is 8, so 8 to the power 0, 
this thing is a to the power 1 and this thing is a to the power 2 so 653 can be represented as 6 into a to the power 2 plus 5 into a to the power 1 plus 3 into a to the power 0 so a to the power 2 is uh, <coughs> 8 into 8 is I think 64 64 into 6 64 into 6 is 384 a to the power 1 is 8 5 into 8 is 40 plus a to the power 0 is 1 3 3 into 1 is 3 <coughs> and here you can see that uh, each of the next number would be increase I mean if we had a next number over here that would be represented by a to the power 3 multiplied by that number so each of the next subsequent position is 8 times the previous position as we had in decimal that each of the next sub subsequent uh, or succeeding position was 10 times the previous position and in binary each of the next position was uh, if you're going to the more significant side uh, it was the twice or double the previous position so um, 384 plus 43 so 384 plus 40 plus 3 this thing is equal to uh, 427 in decimal so if we had this uh, equivalent number in this thing let me do that here with some what colors do we have okay green if we had this number and let me write it over here 110 101 011 and we know that if it's in binary 1 2 4 8 16 32 64 128 and 256 so if i add all the bits which are on and i add the respective binary positions raised to the i mean to uh, raise to the power of whatever the position is so if i add these numbers in which the bits are on so let's say we got 427 before i'm hoping so let's say 256 plus 128 plus 32 plus 8 plus 2 plus 1 and we got 427 over here so if we have we can just write 427 in decimal decimal okay so this thing is in this thing is in binary base 2 this thing would be in decimal and this thing is in base 8 base 8 I don't know if you use that more anymore I mean if you are making your own some students do if you are making your own computer using logical gates and I mean you, the basic number would be the basic smallest storage you could have is most likely a uh, four bits or maybe eight bits so I mean not that useful but if you are making your own electronic circuit in which uh, you are using some transistors which are retaining their states from either high or low you can have multiple transistors let's say you have um, a circuit which can represent a one and you can have a circuit which can represent a zero and let's say you had you have made eight of those circuits or you can have um, yeah uh, you, you oh sorry you you have like three of those circuits so you can represent a uh, three bit number using those circuit so that means the maximum number of possibilities you can represent any one of those eight numbers uh, given over here so let's say if I have a circuit which can represent either one or zero I have another circuit which can represent either one or zero and I have another circuit which can represent one or zero it can only represent just a three bit number any one of those three bit numbers not all of them just one of them just one of the three I mean it can represent a 101 over here it can represent a 110 or something like that uh, I mean it can just represent just one number so this is just an octal number system the more important number system uh, which is uh, most often used because this this corresponds directly to the binary number system used inside the computer is a hexadecimal number system hexa means six decimal means ten so that means it's a base base 16 number system and why we use it is this and why it is actually easier to use in computer systems reason is going to be really clear as we go along so we have 16 numbers <coughs> and you can just I mean this I mean if you just write zero or one this is just a uh, figure which represents some quantity so you can make any figure you want really with a 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and we are not going to write 10 next to it we are going to write a just a symbol which represents 10 b it represents 11 c d 
E and F. So we have 16 numbers going from 0 to 15. All the, I mean, in decimal, this thing is equal to 0, this thing is equal to 9, this thing is equal to 10, and this thing is equal to 11, and this thing is equal to 12, and this thing is equal to 13, this E is equal to 14, and F is equal to 15. How do we count? So let's say we start the count from 0 to A1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, and 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. Uh, if you remember, if you were counting in decimals, so after 9 we had 10 and then 11. Here we have A, B, C, D, E, F, and after F we are running out of all the options. So we again write 0 and then we write 1 because here every number had a non significant 0 right written next to it, but it's understood to be there. Okay, so and over there so after 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 let's write over here um and after 19 it will have 1a 1b 1c 1d 1e 1f and after f it will be 0 and it will become 20 and after 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 it will have 2a, 2b, 2c, don't worry how we are going to convert that, and it will have 2d, 2e, and 2f, and then it will have 30, and it will go all the way to 39, and 3a, 3b, 3c, 3d, 3e, 3f, and then it will have, uh, sorry, 3f, and it will have 40. It will go all the way to Am I running out of space? No, I'm not. So, it, I mean, that's a good thing about one note. And after uh, it will have 49, it will have 4a, 4b, 4c, 4d, 4e, 4f, and it will just keep on going. So, let's say after um, we have uh, 90, and before 90, we had 8f, okay. Uh, in decimal number system, we had 89 and then we had 90. Here we have 16 numbers from 0 to F. So after 8 F, we have 90. And after 9, D1, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, then we have 99 and then we have uh, 9A. And then we have, going to write 9B, 9C, 9D. 9e 9f and then what we have here we have 0 and after 9 we have a a0 a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 a7 a8 and it will have a9 then it will have a a a b a c a d and it will go on to a f and after a f it will become 0 and this thing will become b0 so let's try doing over over here and after b0 it's a large counting okay so after b0 we have it will go all the way to b9 and then it will have b a b b and b c b d b d b, sorry b d and b e and b f and after b f it will have b0 and it will have c0 okay after b f it is f will become 0 and it will have c and it will all way all the way all the way go to f f now here it has a zero over here. Uh, I mean, just this is a zero and this is a letter F. Don't read it as off. This is zero, F, F, and after that it will become zero, zero, and then it will become one. In decimal number system, we had 99 and then we had um, 100. Here we have zero, F, F, and then we have one, zero, zero. And that's how the hexadecimal counting happens. So if we want to convert this hexadecimal number into decimal number so here what we're going to do is let's pick another color okay blue so let's say we have a number um, let's pick another number let's say we have a 1 C F we have this number a 1 C F a hexadecimal number so here what this put number would be multiplied by This number would be multiplied by uh, 16 to the power 0. This number would be multiplied by 16 to the power 1 because it's a hexadecimal. This thing would be multiplied by base raised to the power, which is the position, 16 to the power 2. And this thing would be multiplied by 16 to the power 3. 
So let's try doing that. A is 10 in decimal. I mean, I'm this thing is in base 16. I want to convert this thing into base 10. A is 10 into 16 to the power 3 plus 1 into 16 to the power 2 plus C. A is 10, B is 11, C is 12 into 16 to the power 1 plus F is 15 into 16 to the power 0. So 10 into 16 to the power 3 and let's pick on the calculator. Where is the calculator? Okay, 16 into the power, sorry, 16 into 16 is 256 into 16 is 4096. So this thing would be 4096 into 10 is 0 plus 16 into 16 is 256 plus I mean into 1 6 256 into 1 is this thing <coughs> 12 into uh, 16 is 200 something or 192 okay let's see 12 into 16 is 192 and 16 to the power 0 is 1 plus if that will be just 15 into 1 so let's add these numbers together and uh, taking the order back here 40960 plus 256 plus 192 plus 15 and we have a number 41423 <coughs> 41423 and that would be in base 10 so if we have a number this hexadecimal number and we want to convert this thing into binary I mean that's the reason why we did the previous lecture and this one uh, the reason is that the binary numbers are really long I mean I'm going to convert this number into binary in a moment uh, and you'll see that why it's so simple to represent the binary number as a hexadecimal for easier readability so let's say this a1cf actually each of the hexadecimal number over here from here each of this hexadecimal number I'm not, I'm, I'm not in, including a zero over here I mean it's understood to be there but each of the sorry each of the decimal hexadecimal number over here from uh, let me write it down again I mean somewhere else over here 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 a B C D E and F he, so each of the hexadecimal number can be represented by just four bits because this thing is equal to 0 and this thing is equal to 15 so that means if I'm writing 0 this thing would be written as 0 0 1 this thing would be represented as 0 0 1 0 and this thing would be 0 0 1 1 this thing would be 0 1 0 0 this thing would be 0, 1, 0, 1. I mean like 1 and 1, 2, 4. That is 2 is off, 1 plus 4 is 5. 0, 1, 1, 0. And this thing would be 0, 1, 1, 1. Here if you write uh, 1, triple 0. And the whole cycle actually repeats. 1, 0, 0, 1. And 1, 0, 1, 0. 1, 0, 1, 1. And that would be 1, 1, 0, 0. Here would be 1, 1, 0, 1. This thing would be 1110 and this thing would be 1111. So uh, here if you just write, I mean in this thing is in binary, this thing is in hexadecimal and if you write uh, in decimal, so you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 all the way to 9, that will be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And this thing is in decimal, this thing is in hexadecimal, this thing would be in binary. So each of the hexadecimal number can be represented by just four bits. So coming back to here, so we had A1CF. So A, A would be one four bit number. Here it would be another four bit number. C would be another four bit number and f would be another 4 bit number so let's say what is a a is 1010 in decimal it is 10 and in binary that would be 1010 why did i write 1010 if i see closely over here this 1010 
वन जीरो वन जीरो वन टू फोर एट the bit uh, the bit which represents 8 is on and the bit which represents 2 is on that means that 8 plus 2 is 10 so this equal equal to 10 or 8 so i'm going to write 1 0 1 0 is over here so i'm going to write 0 0 0 1 and the next uh, part was c c is actually 12 in by decimal and 12 here if you just look closely over here here we have One one zero zero or eight plus four zero zero and two and one. So don't include one two eight plus four is twelve. So we have a uh, one one zero zero over here. Or represent C and F is all ones. Okay, so all ones. One two four eight. Just add them together. Eight plus four plus two plus one is fifteen. And in decimal, F in hexadecimal. Just write one 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 one. So this thing, that's A one C F. In hexadecimal equals to one zero one zero 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 one 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 zero zero and one 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 one. So that means that this number is equivalent to this binary number in um this format. And if you can see clearly that computer actually represents. I mean, computer has circuits which can retain their states to either zero or one or high voltage or low voltage. depending on how you define their logic and but computers have like billions of transistors but it's actually much easier for humans to read these numbers so instead of writing like 16 of these numbers i can just write four letters and i can still represent this number so hexadecimal is actually much simple to represent binary numbers um for humans to read i mean that's why we do assembly language programming essentially in hexadecimal format because uh each of this number is actually a bit and if we have 8 bits so that would be 1 byte 8 bit is 1 byte so if i have a hexadecimal number so if i have four hexadecimal numbers i need 16 bits or 2 bytes to store that unsigned number so if i want to convert this binary number into decimal so what i'm going to do is I'm going to um, write the binary. Um, whatever the bits are on, just going to add those numbers. The bits are off. I'm going to ignore that those numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this thing in a really really large format for easier to understand. And uh, let me copy this thing again over here. So I have one zero one zero 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 one. One one zero zero and one 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 one, and I'm going to write the if I want to convert into decimal. So let's write in red. So the first bit, this is one. Second bit is two. Third bit is one two four eight sixteen thirty two sixty four one twenty eight two fifty six five hundred twelve one zero two four two zero four eight four zero nine six Eight one nine two, and that was sixteen something. Um, sixteen thousand. Let let's have a calculator over here. Eight one nine two into two is sixteen three eighty four. Into two is three two seven six eight. So this is sixteen three eighty four, and this one was. Three two seven six eight. So three two seven six eight. So whichever bits are on, let me check. Did I write it correctly? Yeah, sixteen three eighty four. Whichever bits are on, I'm going to add this those numbers. So whatever bits are on, so uh, let's circle those numbers. This bit is on, and it's going to be multiplied by this number one into um, two to the power fifteen. Okay, and this thing is not going to be multiplied, but this thing would be. And uh, let's see, this thing, this number, this number, and these numbers. So let's. I mean, the bits are which, whichever bits are off. I'm just going to ignore those bits because multiplying by zero is zero. So three two seven six eight plus eight one nine two plus two five. Oops, sorry. Let's do it again. Three two seven six eight plus eight one nine two plus two five six 
plus 128 plus 64 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 so we have 41423 did we get 41423 yes we had 41423 so this thing is equal to uh, 41423 in decimal so you might be wondering uh, and I suggest you do not wonder that how do you convert this thing into a octal number the fastest way to do that is um, I mean it's really not needed but if you want to convert this number into octal number so this number a1cf into octal number first convert it into binary just like we did over here then make a group of three and then write the corresponding octal number let's say if I want to do that I mean it's really really not that necessary but starting from here this is a group of three this is a group of three this is also a group of three this is a group of three this is a group of three hey we what we have over here we have non-significant zeros we have a group of three starting from the right mode so triple one is seven zero zero one is one triple one is seven this is zero zero one zero one two this is two and this is one so one two zero seven one seven this number is equivalent to this one in octal number so the I mean the quickest way is to convert into binary and make a group of three if you want to convert this thing back into hexadecimal convert it into binary and make a group of four starting from the rightmost side and then write the corresponding hexadecimal equivalent for that group okay so we have covered the hexadecimal and uh, the i mean and we can see clearly that if you want to represent these long stream of binary numbers we can represent those numbers as hexadecimal numbers for easier reading for the humans but behind the scene computer actually um treat everything as a number so let's see what we mean by that I mean let's make a I mean if you remember in the previous few lectures we actually discussed these ASCII codes so if you see clearly that's letter A in octal is 101 in hexadecimal is 41 and in decimal it is 65 we simply do not write hexadecimal because that's a really really large uh, like kind of a number stream I mean in hexadecimal this thing would be like four bits and this thing would mean another four bits so this a would be represented by eight bits so instead of writing eight ones and zeros in some format uh, depending on what that 41 in hexadecimal is we just write 41 so it's a much more compact format to represent a binary number so here let's uh, see I mean that's only applicable to text files I'm going to explain that uh, let's go to if we have a notepad over here so we have a notepad so let's write um, name like let's, let's write computers and I mean see the space bar and see programming okay and that's it I'm going to save that this is lecture 9 so lecture 9 lecture 9 is here so I'm going to just make any name file1.txt and the encoding is ANSI coding I mean and you can have Unicode coding but let's stick with this thing because I'm just going to read this, uh, this thing okay this is a text file we have saved characters over here and if I can open this thing in a hex editor hex editor means hexadecimal editor so this is an hex editor neo this is a software which is easily downloadable from the internet hex editor neo if you can see it clearly over here so I'm going to open this file and see what this file look like uh, file open and lecture 9 and file open and there we have it the in computer I mean in exactly where in computer that's another topic that's where this file is actually stored we have saved this file into a hard disk so here if we can see this is some kind of a computer motherboard I mean this is a desktop but in laptops here we have the same thing we have a CPU uh, which has its own memory and we have these uh, random access memory and we have I mean this is where the programs are loaded and the most often used programs are stored into the cache or some part of the programs are stored in the cache of the CPU and uh, here we have these um, 
SATA connectors which you view or some ID if you have some old hard disk but SATA connectors are used to uh, connect the hard disk these days so if I have saved that program that text program uh, that sorry that file the file one dot txt on the hard disk and then I loaded that file um, I mean from the hard disk it went to the memory and maybe to the cache of this CPU so it could be anywhere but everywhere these the program itself and the file it, it has loaded and the operation is performing all of those things the operations or the opcodes or the program which has some functions built into it like formatting or anything and the actual content of the file itself all of these things are represented as ones and zeros so if I open that file in the hex editor it says 43 and what is this 43 43 behind the is an hexadecimal number uh, behind the scene it's a binary number so this 43 is representing capital C and let's go to our ASCII table where is capital C this thing is 43 over here in hexadecimal and that's what we had um, here the next one is O a small O for this Oh, I mean, can you see it? I mean, let's zoom it over there. If we have a, I mean, you can have an option of something like that. Um, you can have an option to uh, display as hexadecimal or octal or binary and so on and so forth. Um, but I cannot find if you can zoom in over there but if you can read it that's how the numbers are stored over there so this capital C is represented by this bit pattern but it's a 8 bit um, number so 8 bit binary number is represented by 43 in hexadecimal so instead of reading these the strings of ones and zeros what we do is we have um, in hexadecimal we have like that so behind the scene that was ones and zeros and 43 was that and a small o over here of course c o so i can just write o a small o or 6f 6f is just where is small o it's over here and here it is 6f over here so here 6f represents a small o and behind the scene this 6f is this number 0 1 1 0 triple uh, sorry 4 1 so let's go back to our notebook and see what that 6f is so 6f so we have a small c is 6f and 6f in 6 is represented by 0 1 1 0 1 2 4 8 so 1 2 4, 4. I'm just owning the I'm just turning on 4 and 2 so we have 6 over here and f is all ones is 15 1 2 4 8 turn all of this thing on now that's why we're getting 0 1 1 0 1 1 1 1 so behind the scene this letter small o not capital small o is represented by this bit pattern and this space pattern is if you see it uh, as a uh, hexadecimal so that's a 6f and m is 6d so going to where is m so we have 6d over here uh, don't worry where this thing is capital or small i mean behind the scene just the number so you can just have small a or capital a this is not really case sensitive uh, c language c plus plus is case sensitive so don't worry too much about it so this is um and uh, p is 70 so let's see what p is p is 17 hexadecimal okay you can convert into a uh, decimal if you want to but behind the scene this is just uh, and here we have the decimal equivalents over here but really not that uh, efficient way to go uh, you just see it in the hexadecimal or in binary so if i want to have some more characters over here so let's write some more characters let's say over here so I can have let's say I want to display these characters let's say I want to display an exclamation mark a hash sign 
and an ampersand sign so exclamation mark is 21 hash sign is 23 and uh, the ampersand sign is 26 so I'm going to write 21 23 and 26 so behind the scene what I've written is I'm I actually I've written hexadecimal numbers so behind the scenes what I, the computer is taking these numbers as these numbers and here the zero means let's see what the zero means I think it's a null character null means absolutely nothing over here uh, let's see where that zero is over here so null means absolutely nothing over here so here um zero me i mean they have no space so let's say i want to have some space over here so i'm going to put 20 and let's say i want to have a tab that is like actually um eight spaces i'm going to put a nine over there so let's see if i put nine somewhere in between what do i get so let's say if i have um view and hex and I'm going to write here I'm going to write 9 here I'm going to write uh, 0 9 and then I write another 0 9 over here and then I write like uh, 65 and then 66 and then 67 some letters or you can have uh, what was that um, an exclamation mark was 21 just write a 21 as well so let's write 21 over here and see what we get if I just save this file saved it and going back to notepad and I'm going to open that file See what we get over here. I got a uh, let's see if I can increase the font. Font is just a way to increase that. I mean, if you save it, then it's going to add some information over there, but that's what it saved over here. So, here we have these things, and if you see how the cursor moves, the cursor is moving in tabs. I mean, this thing says behind the scene it's a tab. I think it was a hexadecimal character. Uh, 9 and 9 was representing tab over here so it's moving the cursor by 80 spaces over here over 80 spaces and here it was just simple spaces and then it was um, it was the exclamation mark and uh, hash sign and, and the ampersand sign so here the null character in between is treated as space over there so actually a spacebar has its own ASCII code so you can insert that as well so let's see what a spacebar is it's actually 20 so if I just insert uh, 20 20 20 20 20 I, I get exactly the same thing here the dots are present the null characters but I can increase I can insert 20 20 20 and it will treat those 20 as spacebars as well so let's save file save and let's reopen that file where is the notepad file open here so it's going to treat this one this one was tab and this one was treated as a space as before so notepad has a way of displaying the null character the spaces but behind the scene null characters represent nothing and that null character is going to be really important when we um, discuss those null terminated uh, strings <coughs> the last example is that that I mean this example demonstrates that everything in the computer is represented by a number which is binary but for us it's actually represented as a hexadecimal for easier reading um, but here we are saying that look those number represent characters to display those numbers as characters so the notepad program takes those numbers um, the binary numbers and represent this bit pattern and represent this bit pattern which and behind the scene just a number and for here here it is we are seeing those numbers as characters so we just take those numbers as letters but behind the scene this is a number 
the last example is um, let's say if we have a oh one more thing I need to add is that uh, this thing is applicable to notepad and it might be applicable to word file the doc file but doc file would have a lots of weird looking characters I mean if you open it into some kind of an hex editor because the word program saves it into its own docx format it has some a bit patterns to represent what font it is in it is the characters are and what colors are characters are what are the borders so it has looks like lots of bit patterns uh, stored in that file um, uh, they are not necessarily ASCII codes uh, they are their own proprietary codes to represent the formatting marks in uh, that file so it's not that really simple to represent or to modify the file using the hex editor hex editors are used if you are uh, programming using assembly language or if you are writing directly to the memory of some microcontroller they are really useful over there so you can just write the op codes and the machine code and the whatever values you want to write over there you need direct memory access to the microcontroller it's really fast way to do that so if you are doing it microcontrollers and I really suggest you start doing it using some kind of uh, our Duno or some microcontrollers such as Raspberry Pi or, or something like that you start learning those things because those things are useful whenever you want to program some embedded systems so last example is um, let's make an image file um, image file image file we have paint so we have paint and let's uh, we have these all whites over here and here whites is uh, let's go to edit colors I hope you can read that okay let's go to edit colors and here if you see that if I select white this thing is saying that all of these values are 255 255 255 that means that each of this I mean it's a 24 bit color let's open some file if we can open some file over here um, here let's say we have this image or pick another image over here this is from a motherboard this is a Samsung Galaxy S2 this is a basic architecture let's pick let's pick this thing okay so if I can save that save image as so lecture 9 and I'm going to save this thing as JPG JPG is compressed format so not so sure whether I'm going to convert that that easily okay so let's save this thing and show in folder here we have it okay so let's zoom in there and see what I mean it's an image of a the motherboard and if you really 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 zoom in there actually it has some anti-aliasing filter turned on so let's close that file open with do I have open with paint so that's okay now it's much more simple so if I can have some you need to have some image and open it up and see if you can see those small boxes small boxes over there I mean this is showing a plus sign over here just don't worry too much about it it has those small boxes and each of those small boxes is actually a pixel and that pixel is represented by a number a 24 bit number and what we mean by this 24 bit number let's say if I have a pick color option so okay color picker and I see this box I've selected this thing and I go to edit color it says that behind the scene that pixel we selected is represented by 92 of red 88 of green and 87 of blue so if I do 255, 255 and 255, I have a white color over there. I replace that pixel with white. So let's go back to this thing. See what we have. Uh, 255, all of these values are 255. If you remember uh, that 8 bit number has a maximum value of 255, 24 bit number has 3 groups. Let me write it down.
let's say we have uh, three groups of 8-bit numbers three groups of 8-bit numbers not so sure what the order is but it's uh, simple I mean red green blue so red is represented by I'm not so sure whether red is first and the green is first. I don't know red green blue but you have need you can need to you need to uh, read up the BMP format so green and blue so this thing is an 8-bit number and this thing is an 8-bit number and this thing is an 8-bit number so if I have all zeros here that means no red if I have all zeros over here no green if I have all zeros over here um, it it means no blue if I have all ones over here eight ones over here so one two three four five six seven that means this is actually equivalent to 255 or in the hexadecimal this thing is actually equivalent to FF so that means completely red and all of these things are zero and all those things are zero that means that it will be a red color so let's see that where that red color is so I mean if I go score to edit colors if I write red as 255 this thing becomes red green is zero blue is zero so if I write zero over here it becomes black it is 255 completely green and here if I write 255 that means completely blue so how many possible combinations are there so we can have um, 256 levels of red from 0 to 255 0 means no red all the way to 255 extremely red we have 256 levels of green 0 to 1 2 3 4 all the way to uh, 255 maximum green and we have 256 levels of blue so that means that if we have a 24 bit number representing one color or one pixel so that means we have 256 levels of reds from 0 to 255 into 256 levels of green into 256 levels of blue so that means in a 24 bit uh, number I can have any one of those 16.7 million possible colors so if I save this file I'm just coming back to this file if I save this file to remember this is all white so all of these pixels are represented by at 255 255 255 of all the numbers so let's see if I go to save as and I'm going to save this file as image 1 and make sure you have same 24-bit uh, bitmap so that's important because we are, we are dealing with uh, 8 bit for each red green and blue so 24 bit bitmap this um, this thing is applicable to only to bitmap file because I'm going to edit that in a bit file so let's have this thing this thing is saved as this thing image one dot BMP and let's go to our hex editor so where is our okay coming back to our hex editor if I open this file open and uh, this image here is the header information if you want to look what that header is you can just go to the uh, BMP format Wikipedia entry it contains all the header information I mean essentially in all in hexadecimals so I'm only interested in these things I mean this thing is all white I mean if you can see that this thing is not being interpreted as a character this is kind of a these numbers behind the scenes uh, if you see here display as um, binary I mean these essentially represent all the pixels which we saved over there so if we go back to the hexadecimal format so if I'm going to let's pick a random number and I'm going to replace those white pixels with just red pixels so red uh, sorry black pixels black pixels are just all zeros so I mean you have have a uh, lots of them uh, and it works in a, such a format that I think it, even if you are reading the file from top down this thing is being treated as from the bottom uh, and then to the top of the file so let's copy this and paste this thing so that I can have some black over here this is a really 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 large file so I have I've replaced all some pixels of, of which were white with black and black was essentially if you remember um, I mean let's save this thing save and yes image bmp and let's go back to here file and open
if you can see closely over here th it has a this black line I mean which I have um, you can just do it in the middle of the file as well I'm not so sure about the positions but uh, if you want to go to the top of the file you can have something like that or you can have like um, some anything you know any any hexadecimal number representing some color combination okay multiple selection is not available I've replaced some more numbers with some um, even more numbers so let's save this thing and let's see what we have in paint file open and image one and here we have it so that's what we actually I mean this actually this small box represents some color which I represent uh, replaced with some random number and each of those numbers actually represented a color and it, and it depends on how the computer is told to treat those numbers if I tell the computer to treat those numbers as characters it will display characters in the appropriate program if I tell the number to treat those numbers as um, pixel colors it will treat those numbers as pixel colors and display appropriately uh, keep in mind that this discussion does not um, apply to JPG format uh, because JPG format is actually a compressed format uh, here in in that complex format it uses something known as a discrete cosine transform to um, have some kind of a lossy compression uh, it just r loses some uh, image quality for a smaller file size but here the bitmap is actually essentially a bitmap uh, here in each pixel is represented by a 24 bit number which we saw so just to wrap up this uh, really long lecture so what we did over here is um, what we represent re represented the octal numbers and the hexadecimal numbers and behind the scene every hexadecimal number or everything represented in the computer either it could be an image or it could be a text file or it could be some uh, even the sound file I mean if you have the sound files I mean those sound files are actually uh, represented by streams of ones and zeros and that's it I mean if you tell the computer to save those sound file as wave files wave wav format it will save those sound files as stream of ones and zeros and if you replay that those sound files in a speaker or a headphone those sound files or those ones and zeros would be sounded like sound files essentially so for computer everything is just a number and it depends on us and all the programs we are dealing with or designing with how we treat those numbers and what we mean by those numbers and the last example of uh, how these um, numbers can actually are actually used to be representing sound and such as video as well I mean in video we have multiple images and each image is actually a bunch of pixels representing different colors and that's how we perceive them as picture and if we move those pictures really quickly we have a moving picture um, and there are ways to compress those things but computer and for every computer everything is essentially a number and let's take the last example of sound if we go to a software you can download it from internet as audacity and uh, if I'm just going to record a sound, I mean, uh, let's have a single mono channel and uh, speakers and external microphone, that's okay. So I'm just going to record uh, like one, two, three, four, and that's it. So if I'm going to play that, uh, like one, two, three, four, and that's it. So I'm going to save that thing as. Uh, file and uh, export sorry export as mp3 which is a compressed format um, I'm going to save it in the simplest format as wave format and uh, just a name as uh, sound one dot wave and we have multiple encodings we have signed numbers and unsigned number I'm going to discuss that in the next lecture maybe what the signed and unsigned numbers are um, and we just and mu law and simple unsigned 8-bit pulse code modulation so that we have a simplest possible numbers over there so I'm going to save that and that's it so let's go to lecture 9 
and see what we have sound one I'm going to play that uh, like one two three four and that's it so what we did was that we have this file and let's see what the contents of those files are in the hex editor so we go to open and I'm going to open this WAV file in hex editor and these numbers I mean all of these numbers are like hundreds and thousands of them uh, if you just view as uh, binary I mean these bit streams actually the number of ones and zeros I mean there are the hundreds and millions of them are so we actually open we save that file as a wave file added some including header information and which starts uh, which is at the beginning of the file so that the appropriate program knows how to interpret interpret that file uh, and the program uh, which was a media player uh, we double click that and the media player took those numbers sent those numbers uh, to the sound card saying that look these numbers represent sound play that through the speaker so, so the sound card what the sound card did was it converted those ones and zeros into like ones and zeros it was pulse code modulated actually so roughly speaking what that sound card actually did was it was like hundreds and thousands of uh, ones and zeros and they were actually represented as these values okay so kind of these values so it converted from um this digital values i'm just going to make those lines just to make it simple to use i mean essentially computers for computers just the numbers i'm going to plot those numbers they were going to look to us like this for computer they are just streams of numbers so the computer converted this digital numbers into some analog output in waveforms in voltage waveform and convert and send those to the speaker in my headphone uh, so that we can listen to it and the speaker is essentially a linear motor on linear motor we have a winding uh, and it has a magnet around it so if i have a positive voltage and it goes maybe this direction it has a negative voltage it goes in this direction and it moves the diaphragm and in diaphragm it uh, and depending on it's moving back and through it's going to make some air pressure variations and it has ones and zeros before coming it converted that to a and from digital to analog using a DAC digital to analog converter converted into a continuous waveform and continuous waveform is fed to the using the amplifier uh, which you are going to read it in your some electronic course to the speaker in the headphone and the headphone actually is essentially a linear motor so it takes those waveforms and depending the waveform is going positive or negative it moves back and fro depending on whichever speed the waveform is actually moving the the um, the linear motor moves in the same speed and it creates the air pressure vibrations which we perceive those air pressure vibrations as sound essentially everything in a computer as we know that is a com is a number and depending how we interpret those numbers uh, depends on what we see or hear on the computer okay so just to summarize uh, this very long lecture uh, sorry about it I'm going to decrease the number of minutes in the future lectures just to compensate the length of this lecture uh, firstly we did the octal numbers uh, they are not that used that often but they uh, are the one of the four uh, number systems are traditionally used in the computer the computer actually uses a binary number system uh, we saw that how you can convert from binary to uh, decimal and decimal to binary in the previous lecture we also revisited that and then we uh, saw how to count in octal numbers and we saw how to convert from uh, binary to or from the octal to binary and binary to octal so if you want to go from any number system to any other number system the safest way to do that is to convert everything into binary and then it's really simple to go to octal or hexadecimal or to decimal and then we saw hexadecimal number system which goes from 0 to f which is uh, in decimal as equals to 15 and now we have 16 digits to count that so it's actually very simple to write the binary numbers in uh, hexadecimal format because instead of writing four bits you just write one character of a hexadecimal number system so um, we also saw that uh, it's really simple to write those hexadecimal numbers and, and we uh, essentially the whole lecture is about that everything in a computer is a number and ex essentially a binary number and we saw that how to uh, open a text file in hexadecimal and text file behind the scene is actually storing numbers but it's just showing as characters and those numbers were essentially ASCII codes in hexadecimal we saw how hex, hex editor works then we edited the, that hex code uh, essentially we entered some new numbers and we and the program actually got the 
took those numbers and displayed them as characters because we that the extension of that file was txt and the notepad.exe file was opening that file and it's treating that file as a bunch of numbers to be displayed as characters then we saw that uh, image files uh, are also essentially numbers a uh, lots of numbers each pixel is represented by a number and our discussion was just, just limited to the bmp format or the bitmap format uh, jpg format is actually a compressed format um, it's actually displaying the bits as I mean the pixels as colors but it's saving the information in rather compressed format let's say if you have I want to store this screen I I want to store this image so if, if the if the bitmap is made so that means that each pixel of the black color is going to store a number corresponding to black color which we saw as zero but had it been a JPG file it would have said that look from going from here to I mean going from um, going from here to maybe here they are like uh, 100,000 pixels or maybe 10,000 pixels over there and just and it will say, say to the whatever the image displaying program is look just draw black pixels 10,000 times so instead of writing the black pixel again and again or the numeric value again and again the JPG actually compresses that by writing um, information uh, in a compressed format and it actually un also loses some information or the details to make up a smaller file size by making up some dictionary and just concentrating on large energy blocks I think you might be seeing how JPG works whenever you will be doing your signal system scores maybe or maybe in digital signal processing so it's not a topic right now in this hour course okay uh, the last thing we did was uh, the sound file the sound file is actually a bunch of numbers and we are saying that look these bunch of numbers actually represent sound if the sound card gets that number it will dis it will instead of displaying or doing whatever it will play the speaker as those numbers are so thus those numbers would be converted from the digital value to analog voltage waveforms and those analog voltage waveforms would be uh, applied to the linear motor of our speakers or headphones and there would and that voltage waveform which was um, originally represented by a number uh, is now um, playing up the sound so everything you see on a computer is essentially a binary number so and we also saw some computer architecture and that computer architecture would continue in some future lectures as well in the end I'll leave you with uh, this so let's see if I have okay so that's a uh, if you can understand what that means and I'll leave you that there are 10 kinds of people those who understand binary and those who don't so I'll leave it there and you have to think about it whether that statement is uh, okay or not.